it's still Easter. And I love these first couple weeks of Easter because we get these texts that make us just kind of go, really? What, what does all of this mean? What is going on here? How many of you have ever seen something, it's kind of hard for you to see that far away, but something like this. It's a, it's a mind puzzle. Some of you saw me earlier. I've been walking around with this thing all morning looking at it. Um, Karis took it out of the package for me this morning. I have no idea what the solution is. But you're supposed to be able to get this ring off of this spring, right? But it's soldered at both ends. So you can't just roll it down the, the spring for it to come off because then it gets stuck. So somehow we have to flip this ring around to get it. And, and when you see these kind of things and then somebody does it for you, what do you go? Oh, that's simple? Really? Is that simple? I actually have some more up here on the... Here, I want to... Let's, let's pass some of these around. Don't get too distracted, though, as you're looking at these. You still need to pay attention. As these things are going around, you still need to pay attention a little bit. So, all right. But puzzles are, are things that we don't completely understand. And if you take them apart, you've got to come back together. <laughs> puzzles are things that we don't necessarily understand, right? They're, they're weird. They're, they're mind-boggling. We, we look at them and we wonder. I take them over this here. And we wonder what in the world, how in the world does that work, right? It's kind of like our reading from this morning. When did our reading this morning happen? Min? No, not two days after Easter. A week after Easter? We're actually, right now, we are two weeks after Easter, right? So as we read this this morning, we think that this passage happened two weeks after Easter, right? Yes, we do, but no, we didn't. Um, this reading, actually, if you read the passage before this, you'll discover that this happened the same time that our text from last week happened. This is Easter. This is the Easter eve of Easter. This is the eve of the day that Christ rose from the grave. It's two days after Good Friday. And it's a text that shows us that it's okay to doubt. It's a text that shows us it's okay to not understand. It's a text that shows us that it's okay to be able to look at this and go, I have no idea how this works. And even if you show me, I still may not know how this works. And we can look at that and we can take solace in the fact that the disciples were exactly that way. If you've ever worried about the fact that you don't have it all together and that sometimes you worry about your faith and you wonder if God is actually there, you know what? You're in really good company because there's 11 guys that followed Jesus all over the place that had no idea what was going on when he stood before them the night of Easter. This text tells us that, right? you got to put it back together. I got it apart, but now I can't get it back together. It's another puzzle of life. <laughs> This text shows us that, right? If you go back to the very beginning of chapter 24 in the Gospel of Luke, it's the resurrection of Jesus. We have the women going to the tomb, and they go to the tomb, and they see that the stone is rolled back, and they're, they're amazed, and they're frightened. But they go and they tell the disciples that Jesus has rose, and we, did, we were at the grave, and it's empty. And it says that, that the disciples said that they didn't believe what the women said. It's actually a very nice translation because the word there is ludos. It's where we get the word ludicrous from or delirious, right? The disciples basically said these women are out of their mind. They're crazy. There's no way that Jesus is alive. And then what happens? Peter runs to the, to the tomb, right? Peter runs to the tomb and he runs in and he looks and he sees the, the cloth laying there and he looks around and he's like, oh, Jesus isn't here. And he goes home. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> the women just came back, said that the angel said that Jesus had rose from the grave and that the disciples needed to go ahead and meet him. They thought that they were delirious, that they were ludicrous. Peter goes and looks and he sees it's empty and he goes, huh? Ah. He goes home. And then the next story, two men walking on the road to Emmaus. Meet Who? A man that they don't have any clue who he is as they're walking along the road and he opens up the scriptures to them and he makes their hearts burn within them and he tells them all of these stories about himself and about the, the Old Testament and about all of this stuff. 
And as they get ready to go into dinner, he gets ready to take off and they say, please come and eat dinner with us. And then he sits down and he breaks the bread and they're like, Jesus! And they run back to Jerusalem. They run seven miles back to Jerusalem. And then, Jesus stands in the locked room with the disciples and says, Peace be with you. It's our reading from this morning. right? It picks up at, at verse 36 there. Peace be with you, Jesus says to them. And they look around at each other, and he talks to them a little bit, and he's like, you know, why are you doubting? Why do these doubts rise in your hearts? Why do these doubts rise in your hearts? Look at my hands, look at my feet, touch this. Do, bo- do ghosts have flesh and bones? He showed them his hands and his feet, and while in their joy they were disbelieving and wondering, the women told them that Jesus was alive. Peter himself saw the empty grave. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus had walked all the way, heard everything that Jesus had told them, ran back and said, we just saw Jesus, and still, they don't believe it. So if you ever doubt your faith, You're in good company. It's not something to get upset about. Everybody doubts their faith. It's not... Doubt is not the opposite of faith. Because what is faith? What is faith? Do any of you know beyond a shadow of a doubt... Well, this is a trick question. Do any of you know beyond a shadow of a doubt if God exists? Can you scientifically prove to me that God exists and that God has an impact in your life? Can you scientifically prove it to me? Anyone? I can give you evidence after evidence after evidence that something exists, that God exists in my life. I can point to many different things and different trials and tribulations in my life and things that have happened that I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that I know that God exists, but can I scientifically prove to you that God exists? No. Because that's what faith is. Faith is a hope and a belief in something that cannot be proven. I have faith in the fact that God exists and that the promises that we're going to make this morning, the promises that God is going to make this morning to Jackson and to Violet are true. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, no matter what kind of puzzles life hands me, no matter what kind of stress or anxieties that come my way, no matter what kind of trials and tribulations I go through, this right here is the promise that's been made. This right here is the trust that I have to know that God is always going to come back. Because he promised that to me. Can I prove it? Does it matter? That I can prove it? Because I believe it. I can't make you believe it. I can't help you understand that. I can help you see the things in my life. I can help you see the things in the Bible that have given these people faith. I can show you the the proof from a Jewish scholar who wrote a book about Jesus being the Messiah and how he believes that Jesus actually rose from the dead, but he doesn't believe in Jesus as the Messiah. He's a Jewish scholar who writes about history. And he talks about how he knows for a fact that Jesus rose from the grave because it's the only way that 11 guys would go from shaking and hiding in a room to the most prolific preachers on the face of the planet. There's nothing else that would have changed 11 men that quickly than the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. I can't prove it. But I 100% believe it. And if you ever doubt anything in your faith, come and talk to me or talk to somebody else. But don't take it as being a sign of weakness because this gathering of the faithful is the gathering of the people that don't have a clue of whether or not this is actually true. It's the gathering of the people that hear the joy every Sunday morning and think, I really want that joy in my life and I keep coming back because I know that that's present and I want to keep feeling it or maybe I can't feel it and I don't know that joy but I still want to come because I believe and hope in the fact that at some point God is going to connect this and I believe that too. But I want to tell you this morning, it's okay for you to doubt. Because you know what? I doubt. 
Did the call committee know that? <laughs> <laughs> and I think if you ever have somebody that tells you that they don't doubt, you need to really wonder about that. Because faith is a hope in something that we can't see. Faith is a hope in something that we can't prove. That the grace that comes to us here, the grace that comes to us here, is something that's always going to be there. Because that's the promise that was made. And that's what we've got to bring home tightly to. So don't worry if you doubt. Pray all the harder. And search all the harder. And know that all of these people here in this room are here to help you. Just as we're all going to make promises to Jackson and to Violet later that we're going to be here for them. Everyone here is to help lift everybody else up and to help us in those times of doubt and questioning. <clears throat> Cling tight to that faith in the trust and the promises and know that you're always in good company. <laughs>